Hi students, today we will study about the spectrometer and the phenomenon of dispersion. Our objectives are to learn the theory of the prism spectrometer and be able to explain the functions of its various components. Observe the spectrum of a mercury discharge lamp and record the angle of deviation for the spectral lines. Determine the index of refraction of a glass prism for various wavelengths. As you studied before, when a ray of light traveling through a transparent medium encounters a boundary leading into another transparent medium, as shown in the figure below, part of the energy is reflected and part enters the second medium. The ray that enters the second medium is bent at the boundary and is said to be reflected. The equation we will get is sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 equals v2 over v1 equals constant. This figure illustrates that as light travels from one medium to another, its frequency remains constant, but both the wave speed and the wavelength do change. We will get that lambda 1 over lambda 2 equals v1 over v2. The speed of light in a vacuum is c, and it represents the maximum possible speed of light. For any material, the speed of light is v, where V is less than or equal to C. The index of refraction or N for any medium is defined by N equals C over V. It is a measure of how strongly the medium bends light. The index of refraction of air is N equals 1. For glass, N varies from 1.3 to 1.8 depending on the type of glass and on the wavelength of the light. Note that since V is less than or equal to C, then the only allowed values of N are N is greater than or equal to 1. We conclude that N equals lambda in vacuum over lambda N in medium. For a given material, the index varies with the wavelength of the light passing through the material. This behavior is called dispersion. As we see from the figure below, the index of refraction generally decreases with increasing wavelength. In vacuum, the speed of light is the same for all wavelengths. However, when a beam of white light falls on the surface of and passes through a glass prism, it is spread out or dispersed into spectrum of colors as shown in the figure below. The spectrum ranges from red, where lambda is approximately 700 nanometers, to violet, where lambda is approximately 400 nanometers. In this experiment, we will talk about the spectrum of mercury lamp. The most intense spectral lines of mercury light are yellow, green, blue, and violet. To understand the effects that dispersion can have on light, consider what happens when light strikes a prism. A ray of single wavelength light incident on the prism from left emerges refracted from its original direction of travel, called the angle of deviation delta. What I just talked about is illustrated in the figure shown in front of you. Our objective is to reach delta minimum. This happens when the component ray passes through the prism symmetrically, i.e. parallel to the base of the prism as shown in the figure below. This equation is used to determine the index of refraction of a glass prism for various wavelengths. Experimental Procedures Step 1. 
Description of the spectrometer Step 2. Preliminary adjustment Step 3. Measurement of the apex angle Step 4. Measurement of the angle of minimum deviation for each spectral line The equipment we will use for this experiment is a prism, a mercury lamp, and a spectrometer. The spectrometer includes the following components as shown. The collimator consists of a slit of adjustable width on one end and a converging lens on the other. The collimator tube length is made equal to the focal length of the lens in order to make the rays of the emerging light beam parallel. The telescope receives and magnifies the dispersed light from the prism and focuses it onto eyepiece. The eyepiece is fitted with crosshairs graticule. In this model, the main scale is divided into 360 degrees and the vernier has 10 divisions. Therefore, you will be able to read the angle to the nearest point one of a degree. In the example shown in the figure below, the reading you will get is 103.9 degrees. For each spectrometer experiment, the first step demonstrates how the spectrometer can be set for the commencement of the experiment. While looking through the telescope, slide the eyepiece in and out until the crosshairs come into sharp focus. Then rotate the graticule until one of the crosshairs is vertical as shown in the figure below. Turn the telescope towards a distant object seen through an open window. Adjust the telescope lens until the object, I chose the tree, is as sharply focused as possible and eliminate parallax between the image and the crosshairs. The telescope is now focused to receive parallel light as shown in the figure below. Position the mercury discharge lamp in front of the entrance slit of the collimator. Turn on the mercury discharge lamp. Be careful! The ultraviolet light emitted from the mercury lamp is harmful to the human eyes. Check if the collimator slit is partially open. Use the slit width adjustment screw. Adjust the slit as narrow as possible by using the screw. Align the telescope directly opposite the collimator. Looking through the telescope, Adjust the focus of the collimator lens until the image of the slit is clearly seen with no parallax between it and the crosshairs. Do not change the focus of the telescope. 
adjust the slit width until the image of the slit as seen through the telescope is sharply focused on the crosshairs. If the slit is not vertical, realign it as shown in the figure below. Set the prism at a certain position, similar to the one shown on the top right corner. Make sure that you see clearly the yellow, green, blue and violet lines. Rotate the telescope gently until the yellow line coincides with the vertical hair of the crosshairs as shown on the top right corner. Repeat the same procedure for the green spectral line. Again, repeat the same procedure for the blue spectral line. Do the same for the violet spectral line. Finally, with the prism stable locked in the position of minimum deviation, take away the prism, rotate the telescope until it becomes in line with the collimator. Let the white image of the slit coincide with the vertical crosshair.